It's Tom Green Live! Live from Los Angeles! With special guest, Russell Peters! Welcome to the show, Tom Green Live. I'm Tom Green. Uh, thanks for uh, coming back. Uh, you've been watching. If you've been watching, you came back. If you haven't been watching, this is the first time you're here. But if you, if you have been watching, then you came back. So thank you for coming back. Um, right? Yeah. It's a good way to start, right? A good way to start the uh, show. Thanking the people for coming back. I'm, not, I'm not, not only thanking the people that came back, but I'm also thanking the people that are here for the first time as well. Right? I can do that too. Um, I don't know what I'm talking about right now. I actually don't know what I'm talking about right now. I just, I, I'm, a, I'm a little bit, uh, I'm excited about the show, first of all, because we have a great Canadian on the show today. And uh, Canada's been in the news this week. And if you've been watching the news, you, you know that Canada is rarely in the news. But now Canada is in the news. And we're all very excited about that up in Canada, uh, being in the news, in the American news. And Canada is in the news because of, of this guy, this guy right here, our mayor, uh, <laughs> Mayor Rob Ford. Look at that picture. Isn't that an amazing picture of a Mayor Rob Ford from Toronto, Canada, the biggest city in Canada, Canada the second largest uh, country in the world by landmass, second largest country in the world, never gets mentioned in American media. Uh, and when you talk to Americans, that's the thing, I've been living in uh, the United States of America for about 13 years now. It's a pretty long time. And, uh, you know, it's a long time to be here. And I've gotten to know America pretty well. And I find the thing that I've noticed the most about America is that they don't know anything about Canada. <laughs> they really know nothing about Canada. I say, I'm from Ottawa, and they say, where, where, Ottawa, they look at you like, uh, you look at, they look at you like you just said you're from, like, uh, Phuket or something like that, right? Phuket, right, Russell? Phuket, yeah. Uh, fuck it. Um, but... <laughs> I just, I'm, I'm stealing Russell's jokes right now in the, in the opening. But uh, no, uh, so anyways, the thing is, you know, uh, you know I've, been I've been getting asked by CNN to come on and talk about Rob Ford this week, and it's like the biggest thing that's happened uh, in Canadian history. We've got the, it's a, it's a, in, and it's just, it's bothersome to me, you know, because the guy keeps getting, you know, yeah, the guy keeps getting up in front of the, the cameras, and I, I mean, I like the guy, I feel bad for the guy, because, you know, he's, he's struggling, he's struggling, uh, kind of like the way I'm struggling right now. <laughs> He's struggling because he can't get away from the cameras, kind of like the way like I can't get away from the cameras right now. I should get away from the camera right now, you know, right? Tell, tell him to take a vacation. What? He needs to take a vacation. Yeah, he needs to take a vacation, right. Uh, now, now I'm suddenly realizing that most of our audience probably uh, doesn't care about uh, Rob Ford. Do they? Do people care about Rob Ford? Do you guys care about it? Or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, because, you know, I, I mean, I, I think you should just go up to Kathis Casing and catch some Northern Pike. <laughs> right? Right, America? That's what you do when you're in a media feeding frenzy. Just go up to Kathis Casing and catch some Northern Pike. <laughs> Let the 24-hour news media scandal cycle die down. Come back in three or four days, then they'll be on to George Zimmer's, Zimmerman and everything will be over. It'll be fine. Okay, so that's the first time we've uh, opened the show where I talk about something that's going on in the news. <laughs> and the last. <laughs> uh, but no, I, uh, you know, I do want to say something right now, uh, sincerely, uh, to all of the people here on our crew who work for the show here. Uh, on Access TV, on Tom Green Live. You know, we have been renewed. We're coming back January 9th. We're going to be back next year with a new season of shows. Uh, I couldn't be more excited about this. This is a dream come true for me. And uh, we've had such a great time with everybody working on this show. I just want to thank all you guys. Uh, let's, let's give our crew here and everybody at Access TV a round of applause. For, uh, for being so great, and um, this is a we've, had, we've had some great guests. We have uh, Russell Peters tonight on the, on the show, uh, and we have, we've had uh, Andrew Dice Clay, we've had uh, uh, Artie Lang on the show, Howie Mandel, Richard Belzer, Tony Hawk, Eric Andre, and Henry Rollins, all sorts of great guests, and we have a lot more good guests coming up in the new season. It's gonna be a lot of fun. 
I can't be, uh, uh, I can't say, say it enough how excited I am about our guest tonight, though, on the show. Russell Peters, international comedy superstar, is here. And uh, before we go to commercial break and before we bring Russell out, let's just look at a clip from his new comedy special, Notorious, which is on Netflix. And then uh, we'll talk to Russell after the break. Uh, it's going to be a great show. We're going to be taking your call on, calls on Skype tonight. Russell Peters is here from Toronto. Maybe he'll have some insight about the uh, Rob Ford uh, scandal. Um, but can we look at a picture of Rob Ford again real quick? Can we just look at that picture? Can we just, let's just look at it real quick. Yeah. <laughs> you know, because we actually, we, we actually paid $200 to use that photo. <laughs> I said I'd really like to get the picture of Rob Ford on the show, so when I talk about Rob Ford, and, and you know, then we could, we could see the picture, so then we called, and we had to call uh, uh, some Getty, Getty images, because uh, the Gettys don't have enough money as it is. <laughs> and we gave them $200 to look at this photo. So we can, we can look at it as much as we want. So let's look at it again right now. <laughs> let's get our money's worth out of this. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, this is exciting. We have a great show today. Russell Peters is here. Stick around. We'll be right back after the break. We're back. You're watching Tom Green Live. We're here with international comedy superstar Russell Peters, Canadian uh, and uh, from Toronto. Thank I you. am. I'm from Brampton, but Brampton. you know, you I, I re I, I'm from. Tor I, I rep T dot and and B town. You always clarify that. I do. I that's do. A, that's a suburb of Toronto, though. Right? It is. It's 20 minutes outside of Toronto. You got like Brampton pride. I do have Brampton pride. Actually, we got some great things out of Brampton. Yeah. Uh, Scott Thompson. Yeah. Michael Cera. Uh huh. Me? It's like a comedy. Yeah. Lee a Aaron? Comedy in the water in Brampton. Remember Lee Aaron? Oh, yeah. From metal Rough, Queen? Rough Trade. Was she in Rough Trade? Oh, no, no. I'm thinking of someone else. Yeah. <laughs> no, Lee Aaron was Metal Queen. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. that was her. She Lee was Aaron. Brampton. Who was the lead singer of Rough Trade? This is um, too Canadian. Carol Pope. Carol Pope. That's right. I got mixed up. This, again, is something that people probably don't need me to elaborate on. You know right what's now. funny is Americans are wondering what the fuck we're talking yeah, about right yeah. now. Yeah, like, we're talking about trade, the difference Pope. between Lee Aaron and Carol Pope. But that's yeah. the thing about Canada. We have all these weird references, strange things that we grow up with that, that seem mainstream, and then all of a sudden we realize when we come down here that nobody knows what the hell it is. Yeah, like when you said Capus Casing for Northern Pike. Yeah. I knew that was either for just me or the Canadians watching. Yeah, absolutely. It was for you. <laughs> it was for you. Thank you. Yeah, now, now does, did this Toronto mayor thing kind of flipping you out a little bit, or do you, well, care, you care about it in the slightest? Or? I've been hearing about it for like about a year. Yeah. They've been talking about it in Toronto, and, you know, the, that there was a video of the mayor doing crack with these... Uh, uh, these young gangbangers in Toronto. Yeah. I'm like, why is the mayor hanging around with gangbangers? And why does Toronto have gangbangers to yeah. begin with? <laughs> Toronto yeah. has some gangbangers, though, right? Yeah, it's weird, right? Because it's not, it's not real. It's kind of like fabricated. It's like, yeah, we like that. We're going to do that, too. And we're like, no. Yeah, you just you can't, yeah, you can't be a gangbanger and have free health care. That doesn't make sense. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's too safe. <laughs> Fuck you, Cliff. Oh, I'll be right back. I, I didn't even mention in my little opening ramble there that uh, it's the crack smoking mayor. That's why this story has taken off. Yeah, but there's the video was uh, the, a, a year ago it had, had been alleged that there was a video of him smoking crack. And and and, and it, but you know that's the only reason the story's taken off because I think it, I think it's more interesting because he's so fat and he's doing crack. Like this doesn't even make sense. Yeah. You know what I mean? He's got a dyslexic uh, inside. How or, is he still alive? The yeah. crack smoking mayor. Well, Let's look at the picture the, one more time. Look at the picture. So we spent two hundred dollars for the picture. That's, so that's amazing. <laughs> so uh, well, you must be uh, just uh, riding high right now, I'm I'm, as you have been for years, I'm sure. But right now, your special's out. Your new special, Notorious, uh, and uh, on on Netflix. Uh, is that just an exciting it, thing to release that material? And it put is it a out? it is a great and and weird place to be in because the special's out and people can watch it. But because my tour just ended a couple of weeks ago. I'm back at zero with material. I have nothing. So you really feel like you have to start from scratch? Yeah. You can't tell those jokes ever you again? You can't. No, but, I mean, you know, you don't want to be that guy who's like, we just saw that, you know. Right. So So you, are you under pressure automatically right away to immediately. go out and write new stuff? Yeah, so, even while I was on the tour, I was trying to, like, think of new things, but I still had to complete the tour that I was doing, so 
you don't want to give away the new things on the old tour. You know what I mean? So. So do you write Notorious? Was that special written over the course of a year or two it on was, the road? It, it was. Uh, it started about four months after it had been formed, and then it took a, about a year for it to to become what it actually was. And then I took an extra nine months of touring it. Why'd you uh, choose Australia? Uh, Australia because... You sh it was in Sydney you shot it. It was in, in Sydney, Sydney Australia. Australia at the All Phones Arena. Okay. It was in front of 16 or 17,000 people. Yeah. And the, first of all, the fans are awesome over there. They, they're, there's, it's a complete mixed audience. Like, you know, you're not going to get just one group of people. It's very... The demographic is wide. Yeah. And it reminds me of Canada a little bit. Yeah. And I think uh, the next DVD I'll probably want to shoot in Canada. Just to, you know, pay homage to where I'm from. Right, you had some Canadians in the audience there, though? Hold, yeah, we did. It's, they're everywhere. We're like, you know, we, they, we always have one somewhere. You, 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 ha you, you sort of make fun of all ethnicities and mm -hmm. cultures. Anyone ever get mad? Uh, the only people that get mad are the people who don't get made fun of. Yeah, really? Yeah, like they are, they're always like mad that I, they feel like I've ignored them. Uh -huh. Oh, what's wrong with us? You don't like Lithuanians? I'm like, <laughs> what? <laughs> you don't have any Lithuanian material? Yeah, or? I know. I got to write some of that. That's the next special. <laughs> so no, but it, it, it's interesting though because you have a unique uh, ability to do that. Probably because you're from Canada. You're from Indian heritage, mm -hmm. obviously, and all this. Ob obviously. Yeah. Uh, I'll, yeah. I think the brown skin gave it away, right? <laughs> Either, either that, they're like, that Mexican guy has a huge nose. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Look at Schneider, though, and people get confused by him. I mean, yeah. I guess, I mean, <laughs> uh, uh, it's obvious that, that's, that, that all of that is why you're able to do, to, to do this. Is, is, yeah, is, I mean, is you know, it, that, that's why I'm able to go around the world. Like, a lot of people couldn't get away with this, the things you say. Yeah, a lot of people couldn't go to the Middle East and talk about Arabs the way I do uh -huh. in front of them. Yeah. I mean, people do it, but they usually go to, like, you know, uh, military bases, you know, where it's safe to do so. But I do it in gen pop, uh -huh. you know. What do the, are the, what do the Arabs uh, think of stand-up comedy? Are they pretty big into stand-up comedy? I think they're there? getting into it now, you know. They like me, and that's all that matters to me. I mean, <laughs> shit, if they're, you know, if, they, if they're giving me that Arab money, I'm good with it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> they got a lot of it, too. Yeah, they do. They, let's hope they get into stand-up, yeah. right? That, yeah. that, they, they, are, they, they spend it, uh, what's the best place in the Middle East to play then? Um, to play uh, would be, you know, Dubai or Abu Dhabi. Yeah. But to hang out, Beirut. Okay, yeah. Oh my God, Beirut. Woo. It's, you talk about that in the special. I do. That's and just I, a party town. It is a party town, and the, and the women are stunning. And you can see them. <laughs> so I think you know that helps. When they're not, they're not covered. Yeah, saying. they're not yeah. covered. They're yeah. a little more. Uh, uh, you they're know. They're very liberal over there. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's the only place in the Middle East you can get laid. Well, I got laid at least. Yeah. I mean, you know, and it's not by like some you know touristy white girl. Oh my God. And, and, and I was like, come on, let's do it. And you're like, hey, let's <laughs> let's do it, baby. <laughs> I don't know why I made this chick sound like a man, but that's not what I'm trying to say. <laughs> she wasn't, was she? She was not. No. no. <laughs> You're, 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 you're very comfortable being open about this stuff. Yeah, I'm like, very open. You know, yeah, no, I, I don't I'm, hide my business. You yeah. know, I'm a single guy. What do I care? You go ahead and talk about getting laid in Lebanon, and that's no problem, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. Was it fun? Uh, getting, oh, was well, she, yeah. I, that that, she, that she, pussy was the bomb. Yeah. <laughs> Am I right, guys? <laughs> <laughs> and when I exploded... Um... <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. Well, the, the, well, we'll be back. We're going to be back. We've got a lot more to talk about with Russell Peters. I'm so uh, happy you're here, Russell. Thanks for coming uh, out yeah, and supporting uh, th our for, show. I'm glad, you're, I'm, I'm glad you're back on the air. Yeah, oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. No, we're having a great time. Well, as a Canadian, you don't understand. Like, I grew up watching Tom, like, in the 90s. Like, Even though we're the same age, I mean, uh, like, we, I grew up watching him going, man, I want to be on his show. Like, when I would play the Ottawa Yuck Yucks, I was like, I wonder if Tom Green would invite me onto his show. Really? I'm kind of glad I didn't do it then, because you were out of your fucking mind back then. <laughs> yeah. He was nuts, yes. dude. Yeah, I don't yeah. know what was going on. Well, I, I, yeah, we can talk about, yeah, about that Yeah, let's do later. that. Yeah. Okay, let's get well, some old footage of that. Okay, sure. Okay, we'll be back with Russell Peters. Stay tuned. <laughs> Thank you.
back with Russell Peters. We're talking about his new comedy special, Notorious, available now on Netflix. On Netflix. That's pretty cool, Netflix, right? I, you know what, I really dig Netflix now. I, uh, not just because I'm in business with them, but it, it was funny because uh, we had done the deal about a year, a long time before it came out. And, um, and I'd never used it until maybe three weeks before the special aired. I was like, maybe I should check Netflix out and see if, <laughs> see if I dig this. Because I'd be on the road and I would, and, and to get to sleep, sometimes I just go to YouTube and type in shit and go to sleep. Yeah. And, uh, and, and then I got Netflix. I'm like, ah, oh, this is so much better. Yeah. <laughs> the quality's better. I don't have to wait for it to buffer. You fall you know? asleep on, you, on the internet a lot. In your comedy special, you talk about falling asleep while watching the <laughs> I internet. Do, I do. Uh, you know, fall asleep watching porn, and then you yeah. wake up with your... Uh, with my dick in my hand. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's part of just getting old, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you think you're going to crank it out, but you just you get cranked out on your own. You know? just, <laughs> like, this is going to be... <laughs> Do any of the international audiences or conservative countries you perform in get freaked out by some of the blue material? No, actually. The world is really not as square as we think it is. You mm -hmm. know? It's, people are pretty hip nowadays, everywhere you go. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think the more people travel, the more they'll realize this. Yeah. That it, it don't believe the hype about what you hear about places, you know. Right. So you're, there, there's not these thought police in the Middle East that are gonna. No, there was. Uh, I had one episode happen at the beginning of the tour last year when I was in Dubai, and uh, I did a I do a joke. You know the joke about the tattoo on the chick's mm -hmm, back mm -hmm. and stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, <laughs> anyway, I did the joke, and uh, so after the show, the next day, there's uh, apparently there's something called the CID. In, uh, in in the UAE, uh, that I guess is some sort of uh, uh, cultural police or something uh -huh. or whatever they are, and uh, they called my brother, who's my manager, into the office. They called him and they were like, "Listen, uh, your brother, uh, he can't swear, and he can't uh, he can't make sexy movements on <laughs> stage, and he can't do this and he can't do that. And if he does, we're going to turn the mic off on him. Yeah. We'll do it. We've done it to Akon. I'm like, first of all, don't compare me to fucking Akon, <laughs> all right? Um, it's pretty cool though. Akon's pretty cool. Uh, sure. Yeah. But it's like it's like it's just taking you back to the the 50s. It's right. Like Elvis Presley shaking his hips on the. But this is how fake it is over there. Uh -huh. So you know, my brother calls me and I'm like, cancel the show tonight. I don't want to do it because uh -huh. I'm not going to censor myself. I don't care. Uh, if, if it was my first time in Dubai and they did that, I'd be like, all right, maybe this is the way it is. But I'd been there about five or five or six times before that and performed. So I had no problems before, and I might have been even dirtier before. So uh -huh. I was like, no, cancel. I'm not doing this. And then, uh, and then we get a call from the royal family uh, saying that they were at the show the night before and that they loved it. Uh -huh. And that they came home, uh, one of the couple of the princes were there, and they came home and told the family, and they wanted 15 tickets for tonight's show to show the rest of the family how much, how much fun they had. Yeah. So we got that call, and then I told my brother, I go, all right, call CID back, tell them we're canceling the show, but tell them they have to call the royal family <laughs> and tell them that they're canceling the show because of this guy. The guy who reported me didn't speak English, right. so he didn't know what I was saying. Yeah. He just saw me doing this uh, and this, sure. and was like, "This is bad." Yeah, he's <laughs> he's fucking the air, you know. So, <laughs> so the guy, when my brother called him and told him that, the guy was like, "No, no, 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 no! Say what you want, do what you want, please." Yeah, you know, this guy was just worried for his life. Right. And uh, and then there's like a friendly family rivalry, not a rivalry, but there, you know, a one-upmanship between the royal families over there. So when the Abu Dhabi family heard what happened in Dubai, they called us and said, tell Russell when he comes here, he could do what he wants, say what he wants, don't worry about anything. Right. You, <laughs> you could know, single-handedly just sort of loosen all of these restrictions and maybe bring peace to the entire world. There's a good chance that this could happen. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's great. Okay, we have a call for Ru Russell on the phone. You're on the air with Russell Peters. Hey, how's it going? Hey, buddy. Good. Go ahead with we your question. Um, I was just wondering how you got started in uh, stand-up in Toronto. Well, I started back in 89. Uh, I was 19, and, uh, and I just did it. You know, I just I had nothing else to do. I was working in a warehouse. I was working at the Toronto Star, actually, in the loading docks and, and just walking around the building changing light bulbs and stuff. So I was kind of like, you know what, this isn't as much fun as I thought it would be. <clears throat> so I just started doing it. So how old were you? You went down to Yuck Yucks? Uh, 19, I was 19. And was it Yuck Yucks? Yuck Yucks at Young and Eglinton. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> it was 89, so the boom had just ended. 
the comedy boom and everybody, all the older comics were all bitter and mad that it was, you know, it was kind of like the real estate collapse, you know? Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> and so they were all bragging to me about everything that used to happen and, and how shit it is now. And, I, and at the time, all I kept thinking was, this is great, nobody's watching us. Uh -huh. This is a great time to get good at something because nobody's paying attention. Did you have this aspiration to try to become the biggest comic I had in the world? No, and no aspirations for that. I had no clue that it was even possible. I just figured that I just wanted to be a working comic. That I would have been more than happy just being the guy working every weekend at a club, maybe making a couple of grand a weekend. I'd have been fine with that. I'm so much happier the way it ended up, but uh -huh, you know. Sure. <laughs> well, it's unbelievable. I mean, it is. It's, 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 I even look at it and just go, this is absolutely ridiculous. Like the things I, 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 I'm able to do now and I just, and I do dumb shit yeah. now. Like I just, I'm fucking dumb. Like what? Like I got two new cars this week. Nice. <laughs> For no reason. Yeah, because I mean, you know, when, when Forbes magazine is coming out and talking about how you're one of the highest paid comedians in the world, does, right. that, does do you like that when they say that? I, you know, you, you do. You, do. My, you know, your ego is, okay. goes, yeah. Yeah, that's what you made, buddy. Yeah. 20, yeah. So they, you made 21 million. Yeah. It, it sounds so good because it sounds like you have 21 million, uh -huh. but you don't have 21 million. Right, because you, 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 you spend grossed it all? 21 yeah. million. Right, okay, gross. Once everybody tax. gets, once the government takes oh, half, yeah. and then your agents uh, and your managers, yeah. and then you're left with it, like a measly 10 million a year. Oh, less. <laughs> less. <laughs> so, what new cars did you buy? Well, I, I, what I did was <laughs> I had a Bentley, uh -huh. and I wanted to get rid of it because. Here's what I was trying to do. Yeah. This sounds so obnoxious. Yeah. Okay, here's what happened. I had I, I had six cars. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I was like, you know what? I really only need three. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Again, obnoxious. <laughs> so uh, I want to. You know, that's not like you know comedians and cars. You have Jay Leno and Jerry Seinfeld, and they yeah. go get garages and have a hundred cars, right? Yeah. You could get a hundred cars too. I could, but that would be an absolute waste of money. Right. Because I don't really don't know shit about cars. Yeah, so, so six cars is, is reasonable. I wanted to get rid of two of them. Yeah. Because I was like, I don't drive these two that mm -hmm. much. Uh, so I had a Bentley Mulsanne, and I was like, I'm just going to go sell this, get the money, and put it in the bank. Because mm -hmm. it's a waste of space. It's a waste of money. I, I, don't, I don't need it. And I had a BMW M6 convertible. I had it a year, and I only put 3,000 miles on it. I'm like, all right, this car is clearly being wasted on me. <laughs> yeah. So what I did was I went to Bentley and I was like, how much would you give me for my car? And then they lowballed me and gave me a shit amount. And I'm like, oh, hell no. And then I saw a pretty car sitting on their lot, like a brand new 2013 <laughs> shiny Bentley. And I go, how much is that? They go, we'll give you an even trade for that. I go, so what, what I got to give you? Nothing. It's, it's keys. We'll swap keys. And I said, all right. Really? <laughs> so I went home with a new car. Uh, was that, was that Monday, Pauly? That was Monday, and then uh, yesterday, I figured, all right, I'm going to get rid of this BMW. Mm -hmm. So I go to Mercedes-Benz, <laughs> which makes no sense. <laughs> I go to Mercedes-Benz, and I'm like, hey, um, could you get me out of this BMW? Because I have some friends that work there. And they go, oh, man, dude, you're a little bit upside down in it because you're, the lease is so new and blah, blah, blah. And then I said, well, they go, we could put you in this. And I go, I don't want to go into another car because I'm going to end up in the exact same position. And if I take this car, I already have a Range Rover, too. I don't need... He goes, okay, well, give me the BMW and the Range Rover, and we'll put you in a new vehicle. And I was like, all right, we could do that. <laughs> so so just, I, did, I did knock one car off. Yeah. So you just can't walk into an environment where they sell stuff <laughs> without buying everything I, there. I am, I got, I'm a sucker, dude. Okay. I'm a total sucker. Well, that, that, that's, that's That's cool. apparent. That, 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 that's that's got to be fun. Uh, <laughs> okay, we'll be back with Russell Peters. We'll be taking more calls. Don't worry, Stick Asian around. kid. We're getting to you. <laughs> <laughs> you knew you were Asian. Uh, oh, hey, hey, what's going on? Hey, we're back. We're back with Russell Peters. Thanks, thanks, Russell. Uh, this is fun. We've got a call on Skype here. We can take calls. We hey, can buddy. Keep talking. Uh, uh, we're live. You're on the air with Russell. Go ahead with a question for Russell. Hi, Russell. I'm a huge fan. I hey, heard buddy. you had a friendship with George Carlin. 
Uh, could you tell us about that? Well, it was more of a fanship. I was, uh, I I'm a huge George Carlin fan, and I got to meet him twice in my life. Yeah. Uh, once very early in my career, in like 1992, it was the night the Blue Jays clinched the World Series, and everybody was partying up and down Yonge Street in Toronto. And I was, uh, I was 21, 22 years old, and you know, partying up and down the street, and I was a smart ass kid, and I seen this old guy with a ponytail <laughs> walk past me, and I elbow one of my friends, and I go, ah, oh, that guy looks like George Carlin. And he walked past, and I go, how you doing, George? being a smart ass, and the guy goes, how you doing, kid? And he kept walking, I was wow. like, holy <laughs> shit, that's George Carlin. So I ran after him, uh -huh. and I walked him back to his hotel. I'm sure he thought I was a stalker. Uh -huh. And uh, I was like, I was, you know, I was so geeky and keen and excited, and he w couldn't have been the, a nicer human being. Like that, it was like the most refreshing thing to ever have, you know, meet your idol, and he's a great guy. Yeah. And, uh, <clears throat> and then 10 months before he passed away, he was running sets at the, uh, Hermosa Beach Club, uh, Comedy Magic Club in Hermosa Beach. And they know I was a big Carlin fan, so they asked me if I wanted to come down and open for them. And uh, I asked who was hosting, they let me host instead. And uh, I got to introduce them that night. And I got teary eyed <laughs> when I was introducing the guy. Sure, sure. And, uh, and he was, again, really sweet. And what was guy. it about him that appealed to you so much? I don't know. I think he was the first guy that made me think. Like Cheech and Chong made me laugh. Uh, out loud right away. Steve Martin made me laugh. Um, but Carla made me laugh and think at the same time, you know? And you take that you, you, into your comedy and you're, you're doing something that he didn't do where you're bringing all of these different cultures and to one room and celebrating the world together and laughing yeah. at ourselves. Is that, that's... Yeah. Uh, I'm all about uh, inclusion. I don't like, uh, I don't like exclusiveness. I like inclusion. I like everybody to be in on the same joke. You don't want it to be like, huh, you know, look at that guy, you know. You want it to be, look at that guy, but you want that guy to know you're saying, look at that guy. Yeah. Because then you're not talking about him you know, behind his back. You're doing it in front of his face, and that's a, that's, a, that's a way of dealing with things in a more positive way, I think. Was there a moment early on when you realized that was something that was special about your comedy, that you were, that, and then you started to develop that? or, or was No, I just, I just talk about things I know about. And people are like, oh, you always talk about race and culture, and I'm like, I know a lot about that. It, it's something that means something to me. You know, people don't get on uh, guys that do political humor. Uh, you know, th that's what they do. Everybody has what they do. I do what I do. Yeah, but you, you've said that you experienced racism. I experienced Toronto, a lot of racism growing, growing up. Growing up. Yeah. And, and was that something, a motivating factor to always. get out there? Always. I was always reminded that I was not like other people. And uh, in Toronto, that it, seems even strange because it's such a multicultural. Well, place. you know, Brampton in the '70s was not, you know, it was very blue collar uh -huh. and very white. And then there, there was some black families, and then there was. Uh, now it's like 90% Indian, Brampton. Yeah. But back then, we were my family was the Indian community. You know what I mean? So there was very few Indian families, and and there was a lot of racism towards Indian people back then. Yeah. And, which I didn't understand because I was like, it's not like I was walking around going, come on, buddy, be my friend. They were just like, you know, <laughs> I, I sounded just like them. So I was like, what? I'm, un I'm confused by your anger towards me. Yeah. That, that Indian accent, though, you've been able to make that so hilarious. That That's how I used to get out of ass whoopings. Mm -hmm. And then I learned how to box and then never got worried again. I never, never got bothered again. Right. Yeah. Oh, really? Is that why you, yeah, you I boxed learned? for nine years and then never again did I ever get beat up. I got jumped once and hit on the head with a baseball bat, but that was my fault because I had hit somebody on the baseball bat first, uh -huh. and, then, and then I got hit with my own bat <laughs> like an idiot. It's a rough and tumble place, Toronto, with it, our it, crack smoking mayor and their, crack smoking their mayor. gangs and hip hop and the hip hop. The hip hop's big up there. You know, do you know Tom used to be a, a good rapper? I mean, I, he probably still is. I, uh, I, yeah, well, I, I, I grew up liking rap music like yeah. yourself. You're now. But I remember like uh, buying a, the 12 inch of Check the OR. He yeah. was in a group called Organized Rhyme. We, we, we would go down to Toronto from Ottawa to yeah. perform with our little rap group that we had. Yeah. And we got Who a was the other guy in the group? Uh, Greg, Greg Campbell. Mm -hmm. And uh, we would go uh, MC Pin and MC Bones was, yeah. our, was our names. It's on YouTube. Check it out on YouTube, everybody. Yep. Check the OR. But I remember we, we'd go down to Toronto to perform, and we were these, you know, goofy white kids from Ottawa, and we went down, we performed at the, the barbecue. You remember the barbecue yeah. parties? Yeah. the barbecue in the summer. And it was, was the urban hip-hop 
underground uh, Toronto hip hop scene, and they uh, they nearly killed us. We nearly got out of there alive. Yeah, but you had that dope beat on Checka OR. Yeah, Curtis blows. It was the, the breaks. breaks. Yep. And uh, how did you clear that sample? Uh, you know, we just uh, I I don't know if we did. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if we did. You know, you know so much about music, though, right? You in your, in your Netflix uh, special. And you had your uh, yeah. There's the four-part documentary series. Four-part documentary series, and in New York, after your show at the Barclay uh, Center yep. in Brooklyn, you went and had this after party with all of the forefathers of hip hop, Melly Mel and Melly Mel uh, and Cool, cool. Herc hosted yeah. my party, and DJ Premier DJed, and and then Brand Nubian performed, and Large Professor, and Craig G, and Special Ed, and uh, Jizza was there, Chip Fu from Fushnickens. The Fushnickens, yeah. So yeah. you're such a huge fan of hip hop, and now you get to go meet all these guys. Is that just a? It's the wildest thing for me. Like two weeks ago, <coughs> I went to the Soul Train Awards, and I was uh, Big Daddy Kane's guest. Right. Like, and I'm like, you know, I grew up, you know, with posters of Big Daddy Kane on my wall. Yeah. And here he is sitting beside me, going, and just, uh, you know, I'm saying shit to him, and he's just like, "You gonna get me in trouble in here?" <laughs> <laughs> you know, I got Big Daddy Kane. You know, laughing, and I'm like, this is the best feeling in the world. Yeah, you know? that's amazing. Okay, cool. Well, we're going to take a break. Stick around. We'll be back with more calls and Russell Peters right after this. We're back with Russell Peters. Thanks, Russell. Thanks, Tom. You had, just had a big birthday party in New York? I did in September. I, uh, I turned 43, but I redid my 40th. <laughs> Let me explain. <laughs> what happened was I went to the Bentley deal. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> uh, when, I was, when I turned 40, I was married, and, uh, and it, was not a, you know, it wasn't a, a fun situation, the, uh -huh. the birthday. Uh -huh. and, uh, and when I turned 43, I was... Uh, subsequently, I was single already, so that was good. Yeah. I even when I turned 42, I was single. But this one, I, I don't know. I just wanted to redo 40. Yeah. Were you married longer than me? Uh, were you, how long were you married for? Five months. Oh, I know. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, but you. Here's the. Here's how you beat me. All right. <clears throat> you had an A-list celebrity. Yeah. Well, you know. Well, and you know, she and, was and, really hot. And you're an A-list celebrity. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I'm oh, E H uh, list celebrity. E H. Yeah. <laughs> So and uh, now you have a, a, a beautiful daughter. I have now. a daughter. Is yeah. that pretty exciting? I, uh, my daughter. I just had to leave her at my house just now. And, uh huh. But I have a trick with her because everyone's like, you know, everyone's like, you should sneak out. I go, I don't want my daughter to think that daddy sneaks out. So I'll, I want her to say bye to me every time I leave. But instead of saying bye and her crying, I've got this trick now where I say, say bye to daddy, and she go, bye daddy, and then I fake pretend to cry, and then she laughs, and then I leave. <laughs> so that's how I get out of the house. Like I, that's. That's how I avoid her getting upset. I make her think that I'm upset. Well, I, I am upset that I'm leaving my kid, but I don't want her to cry when I leave because that's going to suck for whoever's left there with her, and it's going to suck for my kids. So. Do you think that's going to affect your uh, approach to comedy, having a daughter? No, it's probably going to affect my approach to women more than anything. It's, uh, uh -huh. you know, you, you're a little bit more conscious and you try to be less of a scumbag now. So I read you said that if you get too happy as yeah. a comedian, it can affect your comedy because you know comedy comes from it comes from dark and, places. Mm -hmm. And and uh, I honestly think comedians sabotage relationships in order to feel some sort of pain. Yeah. Because we're genuinely innately we're ha I'm a happy person. Yeah. Uh, so the only way I'm going to get any kind of you know miserable feeling is if I meet a girl and then you know she you know it doesn't work out. Then you get that down. You get that down feeling, and yeah. then you need that because that gets your brain going into darker places. And the darker a comedian's brain goes, uh, the more funny stuff there is in there. Yeah, because it comes from what negative experience. Comes from pain. Yeah, you. T I mean, you're special. You talk about uh, childbirth and being there at the birth of your child. And yeah. It's a hilarious bit. Is that, is that uh, the way you really feel about it? About childbirth? About like you know, it's like your restaurant burn. It is. It really is like watching your favorite <laughs> restaurant burn down. Yeah. You know you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, when you see something walking out of there and you know, I'm not going to be able to fill those shoes. Um, <laughs> you know. Okay, let's take a call. Let's I think we have Chris Isaac okay. and John Oates. Yeah. Um, <laughs> You're on with Russell Peters. You have a question. Yeah. Uh, sure. Hi. 
<laughs> yeah, is it, uh, it's aha, maybe. Is, is that what it is? Aha? Aha? Uh, uh, is that I don't know. Oh, that could be aha. Yeah. Uh-huh. Take on B. Okay, what, what's How going Italian on, guys? How Italian does that guy look? Jesus. You're, this is our first two callers at the same time. Glad you... Yeah. Yeah. Glad you both got fun. to squeeze in there. We we made it somehow into the little box. Nice. Hey, yo. Well, go ahead. We all made it out, out of a little box, same way, so... There you go. What's your question? Our question for Russell is, how have the stand-up audiences changed since when you first started out? Well, they didn't know me 24 years ago, and now they know me. Yeah. You know, it's, it, you know, it's, I think it's a pretty obvious how it changed, but, I mean, uh, I, it, it changes continuously now over the course of every tour. I, you know, there, you, you go to different places and you sell out bigger places or some places you went to and you did something big, now you got to go back and do something smaller. So... I mean, it's 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 like watching a it's like watching a graph, you know. Mm-hmm. You, you never really know what what's going to happen in certain cities. Has it gotten more politically correct, less politically correct? You know, you see all these comedians getting in trouble for saying something. On, the world the, is politically correct, and there. Now, see, our generation was the last generation before political correctness started. Like it, it kind of started at at the end of our teenage years and stuff. I so. think it's because of the internet, right? Because now you say something wrong and people can take it, it repeat yeah, it's, it. It's a very weird thing nowadays. It's, you know, political correctness, I kind of ruined freedom of speech as far as I'm concerned, you know. Yeah. You used to be able to say whatever you want. I honestly, I, the, the thing is, it's about intent. What are your words, what are you intending to do with those words? Or, or is your intention to make somebody smile? Is your intention to hurt somebody's feelings? And people mistake, they, they discount what, what the intention is, and they just go, oh, those are bad words, these are things you shouldn't be able to say. Like, I was on a talk show uh, about a month and a half ago, and I said chick. Uh, they were like, what kind of, uh, I go, most of the chicks I date, blah, 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 and the whole, the, the host and the whole audience turned on me, because you call women chicks, and I'm like, what? Wow. I didn't say broad, I didn't say these bitches, I said yeah. chick, like as in cute little baby chicken. <laughs> like that's where the term chick must have came from because yeah. chicks are cute and women are cute and women are chicks that's got to be the origin at some point what show was that bethany okay <laughs> so she was she's she's a little uh well no the whole lot and it just the whole place turned against me uh-huh okay you're, like, you're a pig and i'm like, I'm like <laughs> what <laughs> i was so con- i was so confused by it because i was like I, my intention was not to insult or, or discredit anybody or, uh, that's not who I am, but uh, when, you know, it, you can be made to look that way. It, it's like when somebody walks up and you go, why are you so angry? You go, I'm not angry. No, you're angry. I'm not angry. You start getting angry uh-huh. because they've empowered that word onto you, you know what I mean? Yeah. No. So you can manipulate people into doing whatever you want. So yeah, have you, has that ever happened in a show, though? Like, I, I sort of asked that earlier, but, you know, surely one Somebody time... Somebody getting mad? Just, yeah, where you go... Because you do a yeah, lot of crowd long, work. A and, long and, time ago. Yeah. You know, it, it hasn't happened in a while. Yeah, because it's all fun. It's all done in yeah. fun. Yeah. I'm just amazed at how much crowd work you have in your special. You're doing the special in a big stadium, and uh, it's a... a you know, beautifully produced show, but you're doing, you're willing to improvise and do all this. Yeah, I, I, I like that. I kind of pride myself on being able to think on my toes, and and I kind of want to showcase that when I'm doing my show. A lot of times, uh, you know, there is the obvious stuff that is genuinely crowd work, and a lot of times I talk to the audience to set bits up, uh-huh. and sometimes the audience, uh, some sometimes people are like, oh, he didn't do his act. That we saw him, he didn't do his act, but I actually did do my act. You just misunderstood. Like, I sold it to you in a way that looks like I did not do an act. Right. So, you know, sometimes people misunderstand how, uh, uh, you know, it depends on what they're watching. Yeah. Awesome. We'll be back. Stick around. We'll be back with Russell Peters after the break. Back with Russell Peters, and uh, yeah, it's been fun. You know, it goes I, I, by fast, right? You know what's funny is I, I I don't know if they can hear it, but I can hear it because I'm a Canadian. The train? No. No. <laughs> you, you didn't. You haven't heard the train going by? Every once in a while. I have not heard the train. Yeah, we, we 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 moved the studio in here, and we were all really excited. And then the first show happened, and then we realized we're on the yeah we're on the train track here. So oh, nice. If you listen closely. It's like shooting in New York. Yeah, yeah, exactly. No, uh, what, but I hear your accent. I hear your oh. Canadian accent still. Thirteen years later, after being here this. Yeah, time. when I say about. Uh, yeah, I hear it all the time. 
Hold on, let's do it. Uh, we're going, hip, two, hip, hip, hip. <laughs> That's a very Canadian thing. Tom's very Canadian. I don't know if you guys oh, yeah. can pick up on that. Yeah, absolutely there, right? <laughs> oh, is that, oh, is that right, eh? No, when you go back to Canada, is it just, uh, people just must be so excited to see you now. You're the... I'm excited to see them. Yeah, is, is, but, you know, Canadians get so proud when somebody is they successful they... and goes on to this kind of massive worldwide success, and you're very happy to... You know, proclaim your Canadianness everywhere am, you go. I, am. I don't hide it. That's that's sort of a rare thing. And my daughter loves it over there too. You know, she's only three, but she she's always saying Uncle Kenda. Uh, she loves going Kenda. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll let her know that there's an extra A in there, but you know. Yeah. Right now she's three. We'll let her get away with it. Do you go back a lot? <coughs> I um, sometimes I don't get to go back as much as I'd like to. Yeah. Um, but I, you know, I go back frequently, I guess. Yeah. Now, your, your dad is, was such a huge influence in your comedy. Mm -hmm. What, what uh, you know, do you think that he is, uh, you know, a, you, you sort of talk about how you kind of communicate I, with I him? Think, I think I have my own, you know, weird things, but I think that my dad is somehow on the other side pulling strings for me, you know, because my career was just going along, you know, it was, it was, it was good, you know. Mm -hmm. It was a... Uh, as good as it was going to get, as far as I was concerned, you know, as far as comedy goes. And then my dad passed away in March of 2004, and literally within two weeks, my career went through the roof. Yeah. And I, you know, that was 15 years into doing stand-up, and and then, uh, you know, shortly after my dad passed away, the, it just started going crazy. Yeah, and you've, you've expressed in interviews that you think that that's sort of not... Yeah, I, I think, I, I, you know, very coincidental. You can look at it however you want to look at it. I look at it my way, and my way uh, works for me, where I think that my dad's on the other side helping me out, you know? Because so many of the, the, your bits of, of involve your relationship with him. and uh, Yeah, you I know, the funny thing is a lot of the jokes about my dad are not really my dad mm -hmm. at all. Mm -hmm. It was It's actually my friend's dad who I would be doing, because <laughs> my dad's accent wasn't as strong as as the one I do in the act. And my dad would even get mad at me, like, I don't sound like that. Sounds like a bloody idiot. <laughs> and I'm like, no, dad. <clears throat> yeah, but your accent's not funny. This guy's accent's hilarious, you know what I mean? <laughs> <clears throat> now, and, and, you know, obviously uh, a very common thing that people probably ask you, but just so our audience might not know about this, you're, you, you're, you're broke in 2004 when you're, somebody uploaded a video of yours yeah. to YouTube. Someone uploaded a video of your stand-up yep. to YouTube in 2004, and it exploded, and that was really the beginning of that this was, worldwide... That, was, that started everything. And, and you have not met the person... I've or... never met... Did you find him? No, no. Oh, I no. thought this was going to be a reveal. God. I, I was I like, am... you found him? God. I want to meet this dude. God, it'd make me feel bad, Russell. That would have been such a good idea. <laughs> that would have been so awesome. If we brought him out. But yeah. that, would be, that would be kind of... But a... how would we even know who it was? You know what I mean? Well, is, is there... that video still on YouTube? I mean, there are, there's versions of that video on there. I don't know if the original one is still there or what it is, but... It's on there, yeah. You can watch it on YouTube. Because that's just an amazing thing. You, you know, you were doing your comedy. Chugging along. And you probably did. Did you know much about YouTube? Or? I, I, to this day, I'm honestly a half a tard because I, I can't, I still don't know how to upload anything to the internet. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like, I know how to download, but I do not know how to upload anything. But if, if that had not been uploaded when it had, I mean, things might have probably not have happened. Or, or, at or different, have, differently, or who knows, you yeah. know? Yeah. Oh, I mean, be... I'm not mad at it, that's for sure. Yeah. We should try to track that guy and find that guy. Track yeah, it. I think we tracked somebody down to Virginia at one point, but I don't know if that's true or not. Yeah. Do you really uh, not like tattoos as much as. Uh, as... I'm not a big fan of tattoos. Uh -huh. uh, I understand the tattoos that signify something or, or commemorate something I, I get that you know what I mean but just the randomness of tattoos and and the fact that everybody does it now kind of makes me go it's kind of lost its personal touch you know what I mean yeah I, it's I, lost its meaning as far as I'm concerned we, we have time to look at a quick clip from your special from Notorious let's look at a quick clip about tattoos this is a hilarious bit of, of Russell Peters from his new comedy special Yay. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. Yeah, it's true. Ed Hardy is uh, not as cool as it once it's, was. It's definitely not. <laughs> I don't recall it ever being cool, but yeah. You really have a foot fetish. Women's feet. Yeah, women's feet. Yes, yes. Yeah. yeah. You, you're really into women's I feet. I am. I noticed that girl's wearing slippers right there and red toenail polish. Uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> that is... Uh, that is a degenerate at work. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs>
It's also a big executive at Access TV. There so. you go. <laughs> Thank you for letting me access your toes. Um. <laughs> well, <laughs> so what is it that gets you going about that, though? I don't know, you know. That's, uh, it's like a credit report, as far as I'm concerned, you know? Yeah. Yeah, if the, you know, if the feet are in rough shape, uh, you know, we probably won't be going any further with this loan. <laughs> um. Well, Russell, uh, thank you for Thanks, Tom. Uh, coming and doing the Thanks show. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. Uh, I, I appreciate you letting me do it. Absolutely. Congratulations on the new special. You, and you too. On everything. This is all very good. Makes me happy. Thanks, man. Thank you. This Thank shows you. that if you do something uh, for, just for the love of the game, yeah. that you'll end up in a place where you are right now. You know what I mean? Thank you, man. Thank you. I appreciate it. Good night, everybody. See you next time.